Hey there, welcome back. It's Lisa from Own the Day Planner. In today's video, I want to show you how you can make your very own DIY planner dividers with tabs. Now, I recently did a video where I showed you how to do these with just some simple scrapbooking paper or cardstock you may have lying around and how you can make your tabs and then laminate them so that they're durable. And I wanted to show you how you can do these another way because certainly you can buy your own, for example, dividers with tabs. This just happens to be a month tab. You can buy them or you can make them and laminate them yourself. If you haven't seen that tutorial, I'll link a card above. But say you don't have scrapbooking paper or really pretty cardstock. And more importantly, say you don't have a laminator. Some of us just don't have a laminator. So how can you make your own DIY A5 style dividers with tabs without a laminator or without scrapbooking paper? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that super easily and really cheaply. So if you wanna learn how to do that, keep watching. Okay, so here is kind of the super cheap, easy secret to making DIY dividers with tabs for your planner. Now, I'm gonna show you how to make them in A5 size, but the same tutorial can apply to whatever size planner you are working in at the moment. So what I have here is basically a set of five tab dividers that I got from my local dollar store. I think I paid $1.25 for these five dividers. And the important thing to note here is that these were obviously sized and designed for a three hole ring binder, sort of your average binder. But we are going to transform these into something that can fit into a smaller size planner, like for example, an A5. And we're gonna do it super cheaply. So we're gonna end up with five tabbed dividers for literally $1.25. So you can go to your local dollar store, um, or maybe you already have these lying around the house from your kids' old school supplies and you've just never used them. These ones happen to have a gold and black theme. So if I open them up, we're gonna just have a look. Of course, you can go with whatever style or color scheme you want. I just picked these up because I saw them. Now, the key to these, and what I find um, is most often the case with these pre-done um, dividers that are for normal size school binders, is that they either tend to be coated or they're already sort of plasticky, so it's kind of like a built-in laminate. So these are going to be durable. These are bendy, but these ones are actually kind of on the plasticky side. Now, you might find these tab dividers that are sort of in the coated carton, sort of like a file folder, that would work perfectly too. But the key here is that you're, for really cheap, getting something that's going to be durable and that's already got the tabs in the right position. And essentially all we're going to do is cut them to size. And there's a couple of tricks here and different ways you can do it. So I'm going to go with the assumption that we're gonna use all five tabs. And so I'm gonna make a set of five dividers. Now, the only problem with this kit is that the fifth one, so the bottom tab, is the only one that has a pocket. So that's gonna cause me a bit of issue because when I cut it to size, trying to keep the tab, I'm going to end up opening up that pocket. But I will show you how we can easily fix that solution if you happen to have similar dividers and they have pockets. And so once you cut them, you're gonna lose that and you're gonna end up opening up the pocket, but we will fix that. So. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is know what size dividers you want to make. So as I said, I'm working with an A5 size, so I'm just gonna use this little A5 template that I made for myself. Now, if you don't have a ready-made template, you can of course just grab an insert or a divider that you may already have that maybe came with a planner that you're not using or doesn't suit your style anymore and it doesn't have the decor that you want, but you can use that for size. So I'll just go with the first one here. And so the important thing that you have to remember is that you wanna conserve the tab. So we are gonna to have to be cutting off the holes that aren't gonna serve our purpose here. So basically, I'm just gonna line up my template that I've made here with the A5. And you can see the dimensions there if you wanna make your own. And then I know that I need to cut off all of the excess. So 
There's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, if you don't feel you have a steady hand to hold this down, you might want to grab a couple of binder clips or butterfly clips and just clip that in place. Or if you're using a ruler and maybe a craft knife, you can hold down your ruler, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, and just kind of go in there and slice. But don't forget to use uh, some sort of self-healing mat or something underneath so that you don't cut through to your desk or your table or whatever you're using. That's one method and just sort of cut all around and then we'll be punching our holes. I am going to attempt, and I didn't try this before the video, so I don't know if it's gonna work. I haven't pre-tested this on this material, but I'm going to attempt to use my Fiskars paper cutter here with this plastic. I have no idea if it's gonna work. If it doesn't, I'll have to do it the old school way. Um, I really don't know. So you are testing this at the same time as me. So just to make things easy, because you may not have a paper cutter that has you know, sort of all the dimensions or the measurements written on here, I'm going to just line up my template on here and I'm actually gonna use this in conjunction with the paper cutter. So I know that I need to make my first slice over here. So I'm gonna slide all of this, trying to keep it straight all the way to where I see that line and then just try to match it up with the paper cutters line. That's gonna be hard to show up on camera because, well, I mean, it's dark. It's a dark colored divider. So just kind of lining that up with where the paper cutter is going to hit. And then I just hold down this and remove that. So hopefully I've done it right. If not, I can always trim it. And oh wow, this is slicing really nicely through this plastic. So there you can see I've gone ahead and sliced off that. So luckily I can use my paper cutter for this. So the first cut is done. Now I'm gonna go back, put my template on there and then cut off the bottom and kind of just do the same thing. Gauge where the end of my yellow template and the cutter would be. Hold that down, just kind of take out my template so I don't accidentally cut through it. And now we have another piece gone. And what's cool with these, these pieces, by the way, is that I always save anything that I cut off, not just for scraps, but because you can make plenty of things with these. You can make page lifters, you can punch them with whatever size planner, you can make a today marker. I actually have a whole tutorial on how you can use pieces of laminate or any of your scraps to make um, page turners or page lifters or even today markers. So I'll put a card up there if you wanna see that tutorial as well. But this tutorial is when you don't have a laminator, how can you make durable A5 size or whatever size you're working with dividers with tabs? So look at that. We have something that is now perfectly sized for my A5 planner. We will have to do the holes. So before we get to the holes, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut out all of the other ones. I'll probably speed that up for you to uh, make this go quicker for you. And then we will deal with the situation with the holes. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've cut down the five divider tabs to size. And I do wanna point out that I did mess up on one of them. You can probably tell that the fourth or third divider, when I was cutting it with my template, I forgot that I was getting towards the bottom and I didn't quite center it. So although it's still A5 size, I didn't necessarily center where I put my template. So 
you don't see it sticking out exactly lined up. For example, it should have been a little bit higher. So that was my mistake, but too late for me to resize it because then it'll be too small for A5. So just be careful as you're getting towards the bottom tabs that you remember to center your template from the bottom up as opposed to what I was doing with the first two, which is the top to bottom. Anyway, all is not lost. Um, certainly when you have multiple tabs, you end up having some that kind of go in between like that. It doesn't bother me too much, but if I had a do-over, I would certainly make sure that it fell sort of in between the right sides. So you can see the different patterns here and you have all of the tabs. Now I did mention that the fifth one had a pocket. So when I cut it down to size, this pocket is now open. So there are a couple of ways you can deal with this. Because we are going to be punching holes on the left side anyway, the interesting thing here is that this pocket in the end doesn't matter if it's closed or not because once you punch the holes, nothing can actually fall out because it'll be inside your planner. But if it does bother you and you wanna make sure that it is completely sealed, then you can go ahead with some adhesive roller or if you have a glue gun or just some really strong clear tape, you can do that. I think I'm going to opt for just this um, adhesive runner tape from Tombow. Um, I haven't ever tried it on something as slippery as this, but it's generally a pretty good adhesive tape. So I'm just gonna run it there just to kind of seal that shut a little bit. I'm going to be punching holes anyway. So just pressing that down and then my pocket is closed as you can see. So to punch the holes, again, we have a couple of options. We can take one of our templates from our current planner, trace the holes and then punch them manually with a single hole punch, which may in fact be what I end up having to do because I'm not sure if this is going to be too thick to punch with my A5 hole punch. So we're gonna test this because of course I didn't test it before I did the video. That's very typically me. So again, you're testing things at the same time as me. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Carpe Diem A5 hole punch. I absolutely love this hole punch. I did a pretty detailed review of it um, a couple of videos back. So I'll link a card up above if you wanna watch that. If you are in the market for an A5 punch, I really recommend this one. So let's say I attempt to put in one of these. It's thin enough, I think I can slide it in, and it is going in. I'm just putting it to the back stopper. There's a little stopper here that kind of tells you where you need to um, hold your sheet down and then just press. And then voila, I have my A5 holes. And we'll test that out with my planner in just a second. Go ahead and do the next one. Okay, so this was actually the one that was the thickest because it had the pocket. And as you can see, I put some adhesive tape like we just saw and that kind of flattened it down and I was still able to get through with my hole punch. So I did not have to go in and punch each of the six holes manually. So there we have our six dividers with tabs, durable from dollar store dividers, really. I mean, these were not designed for A5, but we have for about $1.25, turned them into a really cute gold and black patterned set of dividers that will absolutely last. And bonus, we have a pocket on one of them, which is really fun. Um, certainly you can use these tabs as is. You can put sticker tabs on top to put the label that you may want, or you could leave these just as the page lifters and use top tabs if you'd like. I'm a big fan of top tabs as well. So let's go ahead and see what this might look like inside of my very chunky A5 planner. I'll just head to a section here and imagine that these were going in to create a set of six tabs. So I will just pop those in and look at that. They are a perfect fit. There we go, pop those in. So if ever I was doing a black and gold theme in my planner, these would be just absolutely adorable. So you can see 
They are really durable. They're not going to rip. They're not going to get bent over time. So this is a great way to use dollar store items that look like expensive planner products. So I hope that you find that helpful and that's inspired you to find some inexpensive um, office or school supplies, perhaps at your local dollar store and turn them into what look like custom designed A5 dividers with tabs for your planner. I hope you found this helpful. If you like this video, I would love for you to give it a big old thumbs up and also consider subscribing to this channel if you like planner and planner related crafts and DIYs and flip throughs. I post about two videos a week, generally all planner related. Um, I show you how I use inserts, I do flip throughs, planner decoration, all of that fun stuff. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Make it go from red to gray so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, thanks for sticking around, and I hope to see you in our next planning adventure. Bye for now.